Hey everybody. Now I'm going to show you how to install an Intel Socket 775 CPU core to a Core 2 Quad CPU. Well, pretty much this is the same method for any modern Intel CPU from Socket 775 or newer, such as the 1366, 1156, and so on. I made a video before about how to install a pushpin style cooler. But tonight, I'm going to show you how to install a cooler that has a backplate. Well, I'm not going to be able to show the exact backplate method of the in portion of the installation, but anyways, coolers like this have a next plate on the back, as I call it. A next plate. That goes onto the back of your motherboard to help make sure the motherboard is not getting stressed too much to apply the pressure to the CPU core to hold it down to CPU. These cores are better in my opinion. They're a lot better than the push pin style cores which can pop off at times and the pins tend to be really fragile. Although you have to remove your motherboard to install these, these are pretty much a better design in my opinion. So anyways, if you're building a new computer you want to go ahead and start installing this cooler before you install the main board. At least when you go to put the motherboard into the case, put the back plane on the back of the board as you drop the board into the case. So anyways, we'll get a close up look here. This is our Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 CPU. And we have an X plate already back, back behind the motherboard, which of course if you don't have an X plate there already, you'll have to pull the board out to install one that comes with the cooler and in some cases you may be able to use the same X plate with different kinds of coolers but there's probably some cases where you have to swap out the X plate if you're changing coolers so one thing you definitely need to do is clean off your CPU and the base of the cooler you can use rubbing alcohol or Windex if you don't have rubbing alcohol. I recommend that rubbing alcohol though because it's a really good cleaner that evaporates quickly. And of course you want to do that to both your CPU and your core. Make sure good and clean so that way you'll make a good contact between your CPU and your core. Okay. Now that the CPU and its cooler are nice and clean, I want to talk about another thing. The next step will be to apply some thermal compound. If you're planning on running a set that's for overclocking or any kind of set that's going to put out a bunch of heat, I recommend that you use Arctic Silver 5. You can buy this on the internet, or if you'd rather not wait on shipping, you can go up to Radio Shack, Radio Shack and get it for around 10 bucks or so. This stuff here works really well. Or if you want to, you can go to Best Buy and pick up some basic white silicone grease thermal compound. This is the Dynex thermal paste. I just pulled the sticker off the side so I can see how much is left in the syringe. But anyways, this is also $10, but you get a little more. So this is a cheaper compound. Anyways, in this set, we're going to use Arctic Silver 5. And here's another thing I'm going to talk about when you go to install the thermal paste to your CPU or cooler how I usually do this is I install the paste to the cooler when it's in this kind of design or a design like this with heat pipes in the bottom of it but in cases where the CPU core or the heat spreader is actually smaller than the core, I apply a thermal paste to the CPU itself. And of course, how I ins install the compound is I use a card and spread it out. Some people just put a giant blob in the center and think that spreads it out, which in some cases it may, but think about thermal grease such as Arctic Silver 5, it compresses in one spot rather than spreads out. Trust me, when you go to spread out the Arctic Silver 5, you have to put down some pressure to get it to spread out because, I mean, this stuff's pretty thick. It's high dense. It's, this thermal compound is high density, 
polysynthetic silver th thermal compound. See for yourself. This stuff's pretty thick. Okay, now we got a nice even coat of thermal paste on the bottom of the core. We'll go ahead and install it to our CPU. Okay, now I'll go ahead and set the core into place. And then we'll take a Phillips screwdriver and we'll mount the core. Which this core tends to be a little tricky to get in, to get started anyway, get the screw started because of its design. So we're going to try to get the screw started. And the last screw that you go to tighten can, can usually be the trickiest one because there's so much tension on the core. Now I'll go ahead and tighten these screws up. And this particular core is spring loaded on all four screws. This way you get an even load on all, all four sides of the CPU. This is something that the push pin cores don't have. Alrighty, the core is installed. But let's not forget to plug in the fan. This is a common mistake that some people may make. And they know when the water CPU is overheating. A few minutes they already cut their computer on. Okay, CPU core is installed. In any ways, that's how you install an Intel Sonic 1075 CPU core that does not use push pins, rather it has a back plate. Any questions or comments? Let me know.